and welcome on News Now, Belmont Journal, News Show, and Community Update. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. Town Meeting has just approved a CPA funding for $200,000 for the Community Path. We have with us today, Rice Leno, Chair of the Community Path Committee, to talk about the next steps moving forward. Raz, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. The discussion was long, but town meeting approved the funding with 200 yes and 15 no. What is this money for? Yeah, thanks. Um, it, it, we're, first of all, we're, we're, we on the, on the Community Path Project Committee are very grateful that um, town meeting did, did vote to approve the CPA request and, and especially uh, in, in such a, at the end of the day, an overwhelming vote in favor of doing so. Um, you know, this is the, the really the, the third time that, that we've come before a town meeting with a request for various aspects of funding, CPA funding for the path. And this is the third time that they've uh, approved it, um, again, in, in, in pretty overwhelming fashion. But yet the, the purpose of, of the funding, um, as I, I outlined, uh, you know, at town meeting is, is really fundamentally to keep the project moving as, as quickly as, as we can. Um, so, you know, as I think folks know, uh, the town did contract with a design consultant for phase one of the community path. Uh, back in, in, in a couple of years ago. And that design work is ongoing. Uh, we're, we're nearing the submission of, of our, what's called the 25% design plans. Um, the, the consultant expects those will be submitted to the state um, in, in August or September timeframe of, of, of 2021. Um, and the really the, the next big town responsibility um, aside from from designing the path is is securing the right of way for for the path um, you know the, the 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 state is is likely to uh, fund construction of the path through uh, what's called the transportation improvement program, which is a, essentially a pot of, of federal highway dollars. But the ten, before before we get there, essentially the the, the town uh, has to has to design and then secure right of way. So the the request that that the, the CPA funding that town meeting just approved is really to begin that process of uh, right of way. Um, uh, acquisition, and it's it's a you know it's a it's a very formalized process um, that that is is governed by by MassDOT by state requirements uh, for a project that will ultimately be um, uh, managed by MassDOT, which which the community path will, um, and so this this request is really to fund the the initial stages of that um, of that process. Um, so you know really what what it will be used for. So the, the design consultant will um, determine with with particularity where the design impacts any private property, right down you know so they'll they'll be they'll be preparing what's called a right of way plan, which will describe that in, in, in a lot of detail. Um, as as kind of the next step in the in the design process, and so the town with that information will need to meet with each individual property owner um, where there is there is either a temporary or permanent uh, impact uh, from the construction of the path, um, and and describe what that impact is, um, and 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 then the the property owner will have the option to either um, voluntarily donate uh, access to their to their property um, to the town, or if not, um, they have a, a right to be compensated for for the impact. Um, and what will be funded by this request is the um, the appraisal 
of, of the property and any sort of um, administerial legal work that needs to be done, title search, deed search, that sort of stuff um, that, that will need to be accomplished in order to um, uh, essentially propose a, a, a value of the impact to the property owner if, if, they, if they would prefer not to donate access to the project. It is not for actually paying property owners compensation uh, for, for the impact. That would be uh, the subject of what, what will likely be another request, a subsequent request to the CPA for funding for that purpose. Um, once all those meetings um, have been had with each individual property owner. Talking about property owners, uh, some have voice their opposition and get a lawyer involved. Can this jeopardize the whole project? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think so. You know, I think that's, I think that's unlikely. Um, now again, as, as, I, as I noted at, at town meeting, the, the vast, vast majority of impacts that we expect uh, based, on, based on the um, design consultants design at this point, um, are, are going to be temporary construction easements. So we're talking like, a, a, you know, a construction person needs to like walk across somebody's property in order to, to access uh, the, the construction site. They're, you know, looking at the, the, the preliminary plans, there's just, there's not that even many of those. Uh, I know uh, folks have, have been saying that there's, you know, you know, Dozens and dozens of impacts. I, I don't. I don't. I don't think that is is the case. I think it's it's relatively um, small number. Um, we've we've of course asked the design consultant as they're designing to be mindful of this, and of course they have a lot of experience in this area and are are trying to minimize impacts on private property to the extent possible. Um, but no, I, I I don't. I don't anticipate that that. Um, it, it, you know, folks' concerns about about um, uh, access will will uh, derail the project. Uh, again, there's a very very design, uh, defined process uh, for a mass dot project. The, the, this type of uh, impact is is present in virtually all uh, construction projects of this magnitude and complexity. Um, it's, it's like really hard to avoid having uh, any impact at all uh, in a construction project like this, and and there will there will certainly be some here. Um, again, you know, the, the goal is to minimize them. The goal is to, to work with with all the property owners uh, that that will uh, have potential impacts. Um, to the extent possible, I know. I know that the, the the town is committed to do that. Our committee's committed to doing that. Um, and you know, just in the in the you know one one big example that was obviously before town meeting itself was was the forty forty two Brighton Street property, which is you know commonly commonly thought of as the French and Mahoney property, right? Um, and you know, we we. Uh, I think heard heard loud and clear that they were uncomfortable with uh, the the initially proposed impacts uh, to their to their property and and the design consultant was able to um, uh, limit the design really to to uh, the existing conservation easement uh, that runs along that property that that um, the property owner had agreed to with the State Department of Conservation and Recreation uh, many years ago. Um, and so that, that, that's what the design that will be submitted for 25% will, will include is that um, really no, no additional permanent impact uh, at, at that property uh, beyond that existing conservation easement. There will still need to be uh, temporary construction easements uh, in, that, in that area just because it is very, very, very constrained there. Um, but, you know, look, I, I think, again, we're, we're, we're going to prioritize limiting these impacts. Um, we, we 
and, and again, there is there is a very, very defined process that the town has been through before with other projects like the Trapella Road project, like more recently, the, the Wellington Safe Routes to School uh, project, uh, both of which are, are again, MassDOT projects that had to go through this process um, and they, they did require temporary construction uh, easements um, in order to, to complete construction. So the town has experience with this and I, I'm confident they'll be able to, to work through it in that, in that process. Is there any timeline uh, limitation to secure uh, some funding? Yeah, so, so we, the, 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 the transportation improvement program, the TIP, uh, it runs on an, on an annual cycle. Um, and, and where, where we are in that, in that funding cycle is our project, the, the Belmont Community Path Phase 1 of the Belmont Community Path has, has been uh, determined by the state to be eligible for TIP funding, which is an important, important step. Um, so we, but, but the next thing that has to happen is the, an, or, an entity called the Boston Metropolitan Planning Organization, the Boston MPO, uh, needs to uh, vote to program our project for construction funding in a particular year. Um, now in the, in the TIP cycle that just concluded for, for this fiscal year, for fiscal year 21, uh, the MPO voted not to include any new projects um, in, in the TIP. Um, and the reason for that was that, that you know, as I understand it, was that a, 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 a fair number of projects that are already programmed for funding um, had either, you know, pretty significant delays or cost overruns, mostly due to COVID, um, and that kind of squeezed the available funding uh, into those existing projects. So they kind of shuffled existing projects around um, in, in the TIP and, and, and there wasn't essentially dollars left over to program new projects. Um, so what we are targeting and, and hoping for, and I'm, I'm optimistic, is, is getting programmed in the next TIP cycle. Um, that it's it's a it's a pretty lengthy process. It takes a number of months uh, from from end to end. Um, but my hope is that if we can get our twenty five percent design submittal in on the on the timeline that our consultant has has um, indicated, they think is feasible again that August September time frame approximately. Um, and especially if we can get the 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 twenty five percent design accepted by the state, accepted by MassDOT, um, they do a they do a pretty intensive review process. They hold what's called a design public hearing, where 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 MassDOT folks will essentially come to Belmont and hold a hold a public hearing about the the project. Um, if we can get through that by by early twenty twenty two, which is what we're kind of targeting. Um, I, I'm pretty optimistic that we'll have uh, a good chance to get programmed in the in the FY22 tip, um, which would be which would be great. Um, and and I so that that's kind of that's kind of what we're aiming for. Again, if it, you know it's possible, it won't happen. It's possible we won't make it in the tip in FY22, um, and we'll be we'll be looking at a a, a subsequent year. Um, but you know. I, I, there, there's no, there's no like drop dead deadline. We just need to keep moving the, the design along. Um, you know, we're, we're nearing 25%, but there's a lot of work before it gets to a hundred percent. Um, a hundred percent means you can, you can bid out the project for construction. So really by the time we, we just, we just need to be programmed in time for us to, to get to a hundred percent design and have that right of way fully secure. And then we'll be able to bid it out for construction, but I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that We'll, we'll get programmed in FY22. Yes. What about the Alexandra underpass? Do we know more about this particular phase of the project? Will it be built first? So, yeah, that's that's a really good question. It's an important question. So to, 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 to understand it from the state perspective, the the Alexander Ave underpass and, you know, the connection across the, the Belmont High School uh, campus to Concord Ave, it, which which we 
sort of internally refer to as phase 1A of, of the community path project is, is in the, in, in the MassDOT uh, and, and the state's perspective, that's just part of phase one of the community path. There is no, there is no phase 1A and 1B, it's just phase one. Um, and so, so that, that, is, that is how our project stands now, is that the Alexander Ave underpass is, is a part of phase one of the community path project um, and, and not, a, not a, separate, a separate thing. Um, I think there's a, a good reason for that. Um, and, you know, thinking of it from the, the state's perspective and from the TIP perspective, I mean, this is a transportation project. It, it needs to, um, it's, it's most likely to get funded if it serves a, a, a regional need. Um, and, you know, so I, 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 I certainly share uh, the desire, the really strong desire uh, to have the Alexander Ave underpass um, completed uh, as soon as as soon as possible. It would be such a, a great improvement, um, I think. Um, but at, at least as of now, it is it is part and parcel with with the whole of phase one of, of the community path and, and kind of will will almost certainly rise and fall from a construction funding perspective um, with the entirety of, of phase one. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm speculating that maybe, maybe there comes a time when we, when we, when we look at, at phasing and have that conversation with, with the state. Um, but at least as of now, it's, it's a, just a part of, you know, a singular phase one and not a separate piece. Great, great. So we will be connecting from Cambridge to Walton. Yeah, so so phase one, just to be clear, so, so as I mentioned, you know, phase 1A is, is Alexander Ave underpass, and then it connects uh, through the Belmont High School campus out to, out to, out to Concord Ave. Um, phase 1B um, is, is from Brighton Street at the, at the terminus of the existing um, Fitchburg cutoff path that goes that goes to Alewife and the Minuteman Bikeway um, to uh, through Belmont Center and then to the Clark Street Bridge. That's that's Phase One right now. The combination of of those two is Phase One. So right now we're we're just talking about getting to um, the Clark Street Bridge and uh, in, in, in terms of how far west we're going. Um, phase Two of the community path will continue from the Clark Street Bridge uh, through uh, Waverly and, and to the Waltham border. Um, but we have, we have not yet uh, begun uh, the, the design process for phase two. We, will, we, we have, um, the, the town has sought a, a state grant, um, which we haven't, we haven't heard whether, whether we, we've been awarded that or not uh, to begin that that design process, uh, I anticipate that the sort of balance would need to be funded again through a, 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 another CPA appropriation. But it, we, as of as of now, the, the town has not started designing phase two yet. Uh, but I anticipate that will that will happen in the in the in the coming years. And optimistically, you say phase one will be completed when. So, you know, it's, it's a little hard to say. Um, I think our strategy here, the town strategy, is to keep the design moving, keep the right of way process moving. The two things that, that the town is responsible for and, and in our control, um, keep those moving as, as quickly as possible. And obviously, as, as noted, the, the, the recent CPA appropriation will really allow us to do that. Um, but the, and, and if we do that, the idea is we will hopefully get programmed for, for funding, uh, for construction funding. Um, the, the tip is on a, is on a five year timeline. So, so it's possible to get programmed. So when, when I talk about the FY22 tip, um, that means they're programming projects between FY23 through, through FY, um, uh, 20, what, seven. Um, so, so you could get programmed in any of those years. However, um, 
you know, as evidenced by what they did this year, every year they sort of revisit that and they shift projects that are ready um, to, to be bid out to construction to earlier years uh, if they're ready. And, you know, projects that have delays get sometimes get shifted to, to outer years. Um, and my understanding is that's essentially what happened with the Trapello Road project, right? It got programmed for construction in an out year, uh, but it was ready to go because the town kept moving with, with the things it could control. And then it got shifted into an earlier year um, and was, was programmed and it was actually bid out for construction earlier than the initial, um, than the initial programming would have, would have suggested. Um, so that's, again, that's the strategy we've, we're, we're pursuing here, kind of control what we can control, try and, try and move forward as expeditiously as possible with the design, with the right of way, and, and, you know, hope we can get program for construction sooner rather than later. Um, but, but just be ready um, and, and, and have it, um, you know, hopefully shift forward if we get programmed in an out year. But yeah, if we, if we get on the, on the tip, uh, in the FY22 cycle, you know, probably we're going to get, we're not going to get programmed in, you know, for in like FY23, right? Which, which it's, it's much more likely we'll get programmed in, in one of the, um, you know, a couple of years out uh, where there's more funding available, right? Um, so, that that's 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 the reality of the situation. So you know we're 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 probably a few years off from from construction. But um, again, if we can if we can have our design ready to bed, uh, and then a, a big project you know encounters an unexpected delay and gets shifted out, you know it's 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 possible to move into an earlier year, and that's what I'm that's what I'm certainly hoping for here. Yes, let's hope for that too. How can the community stay up to date on the project and, and find the right information? Yeah, that's a great question. So our, our design consultant, Niche Engineering, has a, has a project website. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to remember. It's just belmontcommunitypath.com. They, they have not updated it super frequently historically we've been we've been pushing them to update it more frequently um, and I, I think they they will do so but there's a ton of information on there I think that's a great a great source of information um, if folks are, are interested in the real nitty-gritty of this project and the real like factual details um, of this project um, there's there's a lot of information there. Also, you know, the, the Community Path Project Committee, my committee meets, um, you know, typically the first and third Wednesday of, of each month in the morning uh, between, you know, 8 and 9.30 on Wednesday mornings. It's a public meeting, at least right now, we're allowed to meet um, uh, via Zoom, so it's, it's pretty easy to, to access. Uh, I certainly encourage folks who are who are interested in, in hearing the deliberations of the committee to, to, to join those meetings. It seems like a lengthy process and thank you for your work. Is there anything else you would like to add? First of all, I know there's a ton of support in the community for the for the, for the project. We, we've we've certainly heard that, but we also know that there's there's a lot of folks who have who have concerns. There's a butters who who have concerns about how it's going to to impact them or or their properties, and and those are those are those are valid and, and legitimate concerns. And and I I just want to urge folks to to really participate in and the process that's available um, to them, you know, there, there will be, there will be opportunities to, to learn more about the design. We'll be, when we, when we submit the 25% design, we're going to have the consultant present that to, to the public and, in, in a, in a, you know, bigger public facing meeting. Um, so hopefully again, in that sort of August, September timeframe, um, so we certainly encourage folks to attend that uh, and, and provide feedback that will, that will, you know, that will help the consultant uh, really refine the design as this moves forward. Um, we, we want folks to engage. We want abutters to engage. Um, but, but just know that, you know, certain decisions are made at certain points, right? So what, what, what the 25% design does in my mind is kind of, kind of fix where, 
where the path is going to be. It doesn't make a lot of decisions that folks are, are really concerned about, which is like, what will it look like? What will the landscaping be? You know, what will the privacy screening be? Those are, those are really um, decisions that are made as the design progresses from 25% to 75%. Um, and, and we, again, we, we expect there will be a, a robust process for getting that input. We know our, our consultant is, is tuned into the fact that folks have uh, concerns and have very different views and visions of what it, what it should be. Um, and so we want them to, we want them to hear that. Um, and we want, we want the, the design consultant to take though that feedback into account. Um, and, 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 you know, I, I, am sure there's, there, it won't be possible to, you know, please everyone hundred percent at the end of the day, but we certainly want to, want to do our best to, to do that, to, to make sure that folks, uh, input is, um, is heard and, and make sure that it is incorporated into the design to the extent possible. Um, so again, just urge folks to, to keep, keep participating in the, in the process. Sounds great. That's set for today. We'll learn more about the community path here with us, Ras Lino, and I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal. Thank you for watching.